Hey everyone, welcome to uh, another installment of Data Science 1. Uh, we are about to get into the part of the semester where we get to get our hands dirty with code and dig into data. Um, but the last step we have uh, before doing that, the, the last preliminary, is to get everyone up to speed on programming. So uh, in particular, this class uh, relies on uh, Python programming, uh, and, and we'll have a pretty programming intensive uh, assignments and projects. Um, so I'll, I'll spend uh, just a, a second motivating uh, why, why we want to take this approach and, and why uh, I think it's, it's worthwhile for all of you. Um, and first and foremost, uh, this sort of hands-on active learning uh, is a, a big trend uh, throughout the country, but especially at UVM. Um, and the, the research backs up that uh, actually getting your hands dirty is the, the best way to learn something. Uh, and I personally think uh, maybe the, the most fun way as well. Uh, when we start to look at uh, specific programming languages, uh, there are a lot that, that we could choose. Um, and, and there are a handful of reasons why we might want to choose Python uh, ahead of some of the others. Uh, the, the first and foremost reason uh, would be popularity. Uh, so Python is a, a language that has uh, rapidly increased its use, uh, especially in data science, but, but throughout, um, throughout many aspects of uh, computer programming. Um, and, and is one that uh, I, I think will be valuable for you guys uh, moving forward. Um, it's also true that uh, I happen to do most of my programming in Python, as do uh, the other instructors uh, who've, who've taught this class and others similar in the past. Um, and so uh, it's, it's easiest for us to, to show what we're most familiar with um, and that we know the, the data science community as a whole is, is most familiar with. Um, and, and the third is uh, the, the flexibility of Python that uh, hopefully uh, will show you a lot of great and useful uh, use cases in data science. Uh, but I think that the, the knowledge learned here uh, certainly expands to, uh, to a lot of other uh, scenarios of software engineering um, and, and especially to uh, data science and, and machine learning. So other uh, popular data science uh, languages uh, include R, um, and uh, as well as some database languages like SQL. Uh, if we have time at the end of the semester, we'll uh, we'll try to touch on some of those and, and get you guys a little bit of experience. But for uh, the most part, we'll be relying uh, on Python. Uh, in terms of uh, the uh, practical uh, uh, job use of Python. Um, looking at uh, at actual data scientists um, and, and data science openings, uh, Python is uh, the the most requested uh, language or or skill set to have. Uh, and, and so uh, so hopefully this uh, this is practically important for you guys as well. Um, note also that uh, some of the packages and libraries that we'll be using in this class are also uh, specifically called out as, as being important for data science jobs. So for uh, the programming review, I, uh, I actually will not be going through a whirlwind tour of Python with you uh, today. Uh, there are lots and lots of really excellent resources uh, on the web. Um, and, and, and instead, my plan is to, to point you towards some of those uh, that I think have gone through uh, an introduction to Python uh, in a lot more detail and, and perhaps even more succinctly uh, than that I'd be able to just talking at you here. One of those uh, exam one of those uh, resources uh, is a uh, whirlwind tour of Python. Um, put together for you by uh, Jim Bagaro, uh, a, pr a prior uh, instructor of this course, um, that, uh, that looks at uh, an intro to Python uh, from the lens of data science and, and specifically from the lens of this course. Uh, so I, I highly suggest that you go through that reading um, and, uh, and, and identify 
um, the areas that uh, are marked as being important for for this course uh, by Professor Bagro, um, and and also just to to brush up on any of the uh, subtle details and tips and tricks that uh, that maybe you haven't uh, seen before. Um, for those of you who, who haven't seen uh, hardly any Python before, I uh, apologize that this will be a, a pretty intensive uh, week for you uh, trying to pick all of this up on the fly. Um, it seemed like uh, most people had worked in, in some language before, um, and, and uh, many of you in Python, uh, even if not for, uh, for data science uses. Um, so, so hopefully this, uh, this comes pretty quickly to, to many of you, and, and Python is a really high-level language uh, that I think is one of the easiest to learn, uh, given that you already know uh, another programming language. The, uh, there, there's also uh, a beginner tutorial for, uh, for Python users that I'll link uh, as well in addition to this lecture. Um, and I'll, I'll try to be really succinct uh, here today so that, that you have plenty of time to look at those resources um, as, they're, uh, as they uh, appeal to you. And, and hopefully the, uh, the, the knowledge learned here uh, actually is useful and, and uh, applies uh, throughout the course, but, but also beyond for those of you who do have to put in uh, the hours learning a new programming language this week. So uh, what, what I want to do today is just walk you uh, a little bit through uh, my flow um, for getting a Python program up and running, um, and in particular the one that, uh, that we're going to expect uh, you guys to be using throughout this semester, uh, at least in the assignments, uh, which is uh, an Anaconda setup in a, uh, in a Jupyter Notebook. Um, so uh, Anaconda is a, a package of uh, data science libraries for Python um, that, uh, that has uh, almost all of what we need to use uh, right here off the bat. Um, in addition to this, uh, Python is really nice because uh, not only can you run compiled code, but you can also run interpreted code um, so that you can interact with the programs in real time. And uh, a version of this interpretive code uh, that is uh, especially useful for, for our types of purposes, uh, especially for instruction um, and, and for sharing code, are uh, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, which were, were formerly IPython Notebooks, um, that, uh, that include code and, uh, and, and markdown text. Uh, that let us uh, describe a scenario and, and then walk through uh, through some lines of code uh, that you can execute locally on your machine uh, and then uh, and then send back to uh, us for grading. So let me uh, let me quickly introduce you to what a Jupyter notebook looks like um, and, and how you might interact with Python once you have Anaconda installed on your machine. Uh, so to bring up my terminal and do some live coding. We'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. So uh, the first thing I'll do is uh, move into the directory where uh, I, I happen to have the notebook downloaded uh, for this assignment. Um, note that, that you can do this through the, uh, the interactive portal as well, um, but, uh, but I'll, I'll do it here for now. Um, we will open up our Jupyter Notebook. Um, I'll, I'll note that uh, I, sh I should say the, the, the set of steps I'm going through here are based off of my particular workflow in Linux. Uh, those of you who are on uh, Mac might have a, a slightly different workflow, and, and those of you in Windows um, might be even more different than that. Uh, but uh, for the most part, uh, working with the terminal uh, is is my favorite way to uh, access these sort of uh, these sort of things and, and interact with code in general. Um, though uh, though you may find that with your particular setups and, and especially some of your IDEs um, that, uh, that that things may differ a little bit. Um, but the the Jupyter notebooks are run through a web browser. 
Uh, so so I, I think that uh, interacting with a terminal and bringing those uh, right up into your web browser um, is, is the best way to go about this. So uh, in particular, uh, I will uh, uh, launch the notebook automatically uh, just by putting in the, the Jupyter Notebook command you saw me do. Um, and just open up the notebook uh, for this assignment. Uh, it's it's as simple as clicking on it. So so now we're we're up and running with our notebook. Um, the as you see the, the notebook has a, a number of cells here um, that are either these uh, code cells um, with the uh, the little brackets to the left uh, or markdown cells which are are just text. So the, the way to, uh, to navigate through these books, um, you can use your, your arrow keys as I'm doing here, um, or you can click on, uh, on these cells to move through them. Uh, the other important part is running the cells. Um, so each of these cells you can run um, with the run command. Um, However, you can also run them uh, through the shift enter uh, shortcut, um, which I find uh, much more convenient uh, to, to work with. So uh, going through the, the instructions, you, you guys can, can go through all of this on, on your own time. Um, I'll, I'll just note uh, at the very end here um, that sometimes you will want to edit uh, markdown cells. Um, you can do that uh, either by clicking enter um, or you can double click on them um, and uh, in this case uh, I've put a little note here to for, for you to uh, edit this markdown if it's uh, applicable to you um, and, and so uh, if so uh, you can just uh, put in your own text. And, uh, and similarly hit, uh, hit run or hit uh, shift enter um, to, to save that markdown. Just to orient you with the, the code in the actual assignments as well. Um, what uh, what you will uh, see are uh, are some ellipses here uh, for the parts of the uh, assignment that, that need to be filled in. Um, so, uh, for example, uh, this first question asks you to uh, to assign the value three to the variable uh, x. Um, so, if we put in uh, some uh, some value. Uh, and run that, uh, we'll, we'll see that, that we've uh, assigned some value to that uh, number x. And if we uh, run our auto grader, uh, which is uh, what, what the, this assignment is, is mostly uh, set to test, um, you'll see that, uh, that we get uh, some nice feedback about how well our program ran. Uh, so we'll, we'll rely on this uh, quite a bit this semester. Um, to, to try and get you guys some real-time feedback um, through, uh, through the auto grading uh, mechanism in these notebooks. Uh, one other uh, thing to, to note um, is that uh, notebooks are also uh, non-linear, uh, which means that they're not necessarily executed in order. So that's something to, to keep in mind as we are uh, going through them. Uh, so for example, um, we were to set some variable to um, some value. And I'll print it out so we can see. Um, then, uh, then later, go back and uh, reuse that same variable. setting it to a different value this time. Um, if we uh, were to go in uh, and uh, run a bunch of fancy code, 
and then uh, ask what the value of our variable is, um, you would uh, you would expect uh, to be the the last value that that you ran um, that that you've seen here. Uh, but but notice the the numbers um, of the uh, input and output uh, in indices here. So for example, if I were to uh, to go back and, uh, and and change something about a prior tile uh, and, and rerun that block, um, the the prior block would would be uh, numbered after uh, ones that appear to be later on in our program uh, but in the in the the notebooks execution uh, the the blocks with the higher numbers are are later so rather than uh, our variable showing 10 as we thought it would um, if we print out our variable um, we'll, we'll see that it's a uh, it was uh, assigned the, the value to it was reassigned when we reran um, some of the earlier uh, earlier blocks now uh, it's it's often the case that uh, we're not perfect uh, writing programs the first time and we have to go back and, and change things uh, so just keep in mind uh, that uh, that as you rerun uh, prior blocks of code uh, you, you should be careful about what nonlinear effects this has on the state of your variables uh, one way to get around this is to uh, go from wherever you made your last change and rerun all of the blocks since then. That'll, uh, that'll get you uh, the results that you think make sense. Um, another way is, uh, is to reset the kernel uh, to make sure that, that you're not relying on anything that you've seen before. Uh, in particular, resetting the kernel and running all of your, uh, all, all of your blocks um, we'll go through and, and run them in the correct order um, that will we'll get you the variable that, that you think even if you've previously um, previously done them in a different order. So uh, it's just a, a good thing to keep in mind as we are uh, as we're running through these IPython or sorry the Jupyter notebooks um, uh, I should also note that uh, there are other ways to interact with Python code. Um, I'll come back here and uh, fill my notebook. So uh, IPython um, is, a, is a, a similar interpreted uh, way of interacting with the code that Um, that lets us uh, interactively go through uh, lines of code one by one, um, and uh, and it is really nice for debugging and, and running shorter programs. Um, but uh, just like any other programming language, uh, it's also the case that we can just write a program file. Um, Opening up a file and running a program within that file is uh, another way of uh, interacting with the code. So if we uh, save this file, um, we can then go in um, and run that script and, uh, and similarly we'll, we'll get the output we want. Uh, so hopefully this is, is all a uh, review for you guys um, and, uh, and, and you're all familiar with uh, interacting with Python um, and we'll have no problem uh, getting a, a dummy assignment up and running um, for our, uh, our deliverable this week. Uh, I'll uh, Talk to you guys all in class and and feel free to uh, to reach out um, as issues come up uh, trying to uh, get this running great thanks everyone bye